All right. Congrats, big. Okay. Can we just this last night this. watching watching a kid go to a podium with Duke, Baylor, you know, like Kentucky's in the mix, and it just you know. 20 years ago, you go, what the fuck? What's Baylor doing up here? What's Baylor doing in this, this guy's kid top getting five? paid under the table. <laughs> and lo and behold, I, I just, as someone who, I again, graduated from Baylor, but doesn't usually give Baylor its roses on this show. I'm, I'm there almost too objective. Shocking. Yeah. To see a moment like that is is pretty cool because I if you are at Iowa State, those you they that team usually wins without those guys. Mm-hmm. A Kansas State is winning without the a Texas Tech even, but Baylor's now winning with or without. The rich are getting richer. This is just this is absurd at this point. Baylor is a legitimate big they, they are a big time program in college basketball. I keep thinking with Baylor basketball, like specifically this season. And look, I don't know if they're going to make a run of the final four or anything, but it feels like there have been watershed moments of the next step for Baylor basketball. First of which being the Foster Pavilion and Mm -hmm. the atmospheres we've seen there. And now this, he's got a Duke and a Baylor hat there and he puts on the Baylor one. It's it's just unfathomable for those of us who graduated not all that long ago to be seeing that. And VJ Edgecombe is a heck of a player, man. And they have got one heck of a recruiting class coming in next year with him and Jason Asimoda and Rob Wright. Uh, th- this will propel them into the top 10 um, for recruiting rankings, which will finally put them over TCU in Texas. Uh, but they will be in the top 10 with two four stars to five star. And it it just speaks Sounds to what, familiar at this point, by the way. Yeah, it, it's uh, it speaks to what Scott Drew has built specifically at developing guards. I mean, there's yeah. just not many schools that can throw out there the lottery picks the last few years that Baylor has had. Uh, and, and it's so guard heavy, including one of them being picked in the top 10. Jeremy Sohan has now essentially become a point guard in the NBA at 6'9", 6'10". Who was the 117th best player yes, in America when he came to Baylor? He was a Baylor, nobody. We were know? talking about Kendall Brown. Yeah. And, yeah. and, oh, the Sohan kid might be good too. And he ends up becoming a top 10 pick. I yep. mean, the way he develops guys, it, it's... It's a no brainer. And look, that's no shade on Duke. Duke is Duke. Okay. Even with John Uh Shire, it's still Duke, but you come down and I think this is actually stealing right out of Drake toll's mouth. You come down and you see a game at the foster pavilion Hmm. and you see that, that top of the line facility and you know, you've got a hall of fame coach. You've got a national championship banner up there. You've got a, at, at times, you know, a top 15, top 10 team playing in that arena. Yep. It's it's almost a no brainer. I know Duke what Duke is. I get that. But I mean, for the for the atmosphere they put together there, both on and off the court, the the way they develop players for the next level, it's incredible. And I think it, it, VJ in particular reminds me a good bit of Jacoby Walter, who's at Baylor right now, um, yep. who was a high four star out of McKinney and, you know, winning those Texas battles are great, but um, he reminds me a lot of him offensively. Um, he doesn't have quite the shot that Walter has, but has, he has a good jump shot, great instincts, can get to the basket against just about anybody. Um, he's six, five. And I think Jacoby's about that same height. Um, yep. So, and he's been a star this year. So Baylor fans can look forward to that. It is, it is incredible though, to take a, take a step back and mm-hmm. see Baylor over Duke. It's, it's a golden era, man. Yeah, you don't see, can, can I, yeah. can I ask something controversial again, sure. based on conference affiliation mm-hmm. coach, based on recent NBA talent and, and the ability to develop individuals because basketball is, is a very individual sport. Right. Everything you could, you're streaming at home. Like, no, it's a team sport. Look th- these kids that are going one and done are trying to get to the NBA. Yeah. They, and if you have, if you have two stud players, you turn around any program yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. You know? and, anyway. So effectively with what we've seen from Baylor in the last even five years, has it in its current state? Is it better than Duke? Would you rather go to Baylor than Duke? Mm-hmm. If you're VJ Edgecombe, you would, or or Kentucky, because that's what is that uh, you're seeing this more like a Jacoby Walter. Same deal is he chooses Baylor over the, some of the biggest programs in America. Oh, can I give you a controversial answer? Sure, I don't care. I think it's just it's even. 
it's okay. even because okay. Duke and Kentucky are still like hockey Duke and we'll Kentucky give them both to a, a certain extent. Yes, just... we're giving them we're giving them both a point. I'll I'll even throw soccer out there. They do the same thing. Um but even to say they're even is such a humongous win for Baylor. And I've heard over the years uh recruiting experts talk about you know, a conference doesn't really matter for these star basketball players. And, mm-hmm. you know, I get that that argument. But as we go on and the Big 12 is consistently much better than just about every other conference, I, I got to call BS a little bit okay. because we know it's a factor in football. We know it is. We, we know that a, a middle of the road SEC team is going to get just as much love from a recruit as Oklahoma state is in big 12, you know, yeah. like it, that's just how it is. And they see it because they say, look at how many sec guys are in the NFL. You know, if I go to uh, Ole Miss, I, I might not win the sec, but I, I can a play in some big bowl games and B I can go to the NFL. We see it all the time. Florida still uh, produces Which football players. Even when they're I'm not sure good. VJ Edgecombe is considering as we speak. Right. But, but you got to think about that in a basketball sense though. I, I, if I'm looking at the big 12, I'm like, and I will admit, sorry, I don't want to get off track again, but it probably means more to these three and four star guys rather than a VJ Edgecombe, who is a like five star, no doubt lottery pick. Um, but they have to be thinking, I am going to get battle tested every night. I am going to play with the physicality that they play in the NBA. I'm going to run offenses like they do in the NBA, like Baylor is doing. And I'm going to be facing NBA caliber defenders every night. That has to factor in. And so all of that to say, I I think when they come down to a decision like this and they let's just say they like Baylor and Duke or Baylor and Kentucky the same amount, they might be saying, I'm going to get better tested for the NBA if I play at Baylor than if I play at Duke or Kentucky, just off the competition that we're facing, the big games we're playing, the scheduling they're doing and the coach that they have. Is that, wow. is that okay? Well, they weren't saying they weren't saying that about Baylor twenty years ago. No. I'll tip that. They were saying that about Baylor six years ago, man. No, that's true. That's really true. What a national championship will do. Bringing That'll in, do I it. mean, it's yeah, yeah. I we're gonna look <laughs> back. I know we're, we're over time. We're gonna look back at those those years, like twenty thirteen to really twenty eighteen, and go, what what happened there? What was that? Because that was it's such a weird. It's almost mostly all my go. time there. Yeah, it's almost like that ten year stretch where Tom Brady doesn't win a Super Bowl that we don't talk about. That he just you goes a yeah. decade. We just he just goes a decade. He doesn't win one and just starts rattling them off again. That's what Baylor was like. You know what? Give us a couple of years. We're just gonna kind of sit a little bit. Maybe lose some big tournament games. There's a Sweet Sixteen in there somewhere. Uh, Seventeen, yeah, mm-hmm. twenty seventeen. But outside mm-hmm. of that. You're looking at six years. No, they were just they were a good team. They were a good team. Jack, uh, they caused Jack. chaos. They were always going to make the tournament. Um, Jack, they would be good teams. Team. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll by Big Twelve standards go. for sure, Jazz. Huh. Um, that's Cameron Stewart, Locked On Baylor. This has been it. Always will be Locked On Baylor. And thanks for making this your first listen every single day. Locked on. Come back tomorrow for other stuff. Dose Grande.